All right, so we'll go ahead and start the class here this week here. Just a quick look at Bitcoin and not much happening. Had a little bit of a rally there. It was, um, I saw some sell off there right at the CPI news, kind of pushed it up higher. I think what concerns me overall is this this here. I think we're topping out and it's starting to look like an inverse head and shoulders. So we'll kind of come back around on that. But I guess while I'm here, you know, um, Still do think we come down and retest the, that CME gap we've been talking about, but let's see. I'm going to pull up everybody and pull up my chat here. So I'm just back in town. So uh, let's see. Uh, and how many people do we have here today? We got 11 people here. So that's good. All right. Um, so any questions before we dive into anything? I mean, now I'm going to do and this is our Tuesday class, mostly unpacking some news. And we're going to look at some charts and indicators. And again, the CPI inflation rate slows to 6.4%, but monthly inflation rose, blah, blah, blah. Who cares, right? So uh, show me the, the chart is what I'm concerned about. Well, concern in the sense that's what we want to pay attention to. All right. So uh, let's see. In other news, you know, we had some recent thought about the Binance, Paxos, and um, having to stop offering the BUSD stablecoin, Binance USD stablecoin. Um, you know, uh, just SEC is on a warpath here. SEC wants to ban crypto staking and stable coins in the U.S. anyway. I think it's a big mistake. Uh, will they pivot at some point in the future? Who knows? But uh, for now, uh, we we don't know what, uh, what to make of it. Now, where's the little icon here? In here, there's usually a little button that opens up that article. And that's the first time I have not seen this. All right, dismiss. Oh, I see. Okay, so it was some kind of a notice. So SEC wants to ban crypto staking. So let's look at that. And this is what's been happening. Certainly that uh, we had it news last week with um, uh, Kraken having to give up their, uh, their staking because uh, they said it was unregulated. The whole thing with this is it's, um, you know, one of Gensler's, I was researching this this morning, one of Gensler's uh, generals there, for lack of a better word, dissented and said, I disagree. And even Brian Anderson of Coinbase is saying, listen, it, you know, the SEC said they find Kraken 30 million. Let me just find that. So we got, we're, we're looking at this, but he said, they said, because they didn't register. Well, there, there wasn't any clear rules to register. So, um, you know, it, it's more of this uh, SEC is sort of policing the industry through actions when they don't make it clear what it is, the, how to register. So it's, it's just, it's all just government, um, unnecessary government no first sight. I mean, we can argue that if you want to. I do I do agree we want to protect investors. So uh, let's see. This is the news for that Kraken to shut down U.S. crypto staking service, in case you didn't hear here and pay $30 million fine in an SEC settlement. And, um, you know, why they targeted Kraken, who knows? They're one of the more honorable people. And Jesse Powell and um, uh, is, uh, you know, Mike and I respect him. He's always been above board. They were one of the first to offer, uh, if not the first, to offer proof of reserves in their platform when the other platforms were not doing that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, surprising they would target cracking, but it may just be the first step, um, probably because Brian Anderson was also saying that the, if they try to do that to Coinbase, they will, they'll sue, they'll fight it in court. Coinbase is public, has more money, and it's, you know, I think Kraken, Kraken is a private company, so they um, likely targeted them. And the thing is, they did this, and this is something Jesse Powell admitted, well, not admitted, but to point it out, rather, that um, isn't it interesting that these regulators wait and waited till sort of the weakest point on their balance sheet where they're less likely to fight and loss and sue. So they certainly could have done this a year ago, decided to wait until now, when the balance sheets are arguably the weakest they have been on uh, all these exchanges with the markets down. So <clears throat> at any rate, wild, wild west times of crypto, it's early. And so they've agreed to pay 30 million, but you know they don't really have a choice halting the staking in US. So it's really bad for us in the US because we're gonna have limited staking options, it looks like. And it's just gonna drive people offshore using VPNs, et cetera. And, uh, and so, you know, they, again, they announced that uh, the regulatory body, they announced the firm had failed to register the offer. 
And again, but the the other people have come to their defense and said, including one of Gensler's own higher ups dissenting and saying, well, it, it really wasn't clear how to to register. Right. So uh, that's what's going on there. And uh, we can dissect that, but we don't really need to. So that's what's going on with Kraken. And now they're sort of targeting others like Coinbase, uh, maybe in the crosshairs. And so uh, just skimming through here, we didn't see a whole lot of uh, reaction to this. Um, the um, what's uh, sorry, the CPI data here today. <clears throat> let's see, see, Phantom Coin up thirteen percent. We can look at that. And uh, some other interesting news I did hear about too with Matic. That uh, uh, whopping. Let's see, Ponzi. Uh, don't get scared by the search term, but there's some. Yeah, so there's a whale, there's a polygon Matic whale associated with a Chinese Ponzi scheme becomes the fifth biggest Matic holder. Now, this is a bit concerning uh, because they could they could dump this at any point and just tank the value of polygon. And, um, you know, that's not necessarily good. And you have one giant whale holding so much of it. And I think it was something like nine billion uh, of dollars worth of toy tokens. So they have amassed more than 22 million polygon in the last few days. So Chinese MLM Ponzi scheme, popularly known as Avatar, never heard of it, has turned into biggest, fifth biggest poly, uh, holder of Polygon Matic after it surpassed the current holdings owned at by Binance's hot wallet too. So um, we need to be a little bit careful of that. And I wouldn't be going all in on Polygon for that reason. And having you know your three common stop losses and trailing stops listed because you know if it's like here's the thing that could work in either direction. So we'll let's take a look at Polygon in a minute. Just skimming the news as we always do, and um, <laughs> that sign was great. Ponzi scheme ahead. Uh, so let's see. I uh, I won't pull it up again, but um, yeah, I mean Chinese Ponzi schemes. You know, we, it's good to know who all these owners are. And so um, like a bearish signal, whale deposits 5.2 million to let's see. This is a day ago. Big old bear picture there. Significant amount of problematic uh, polygon moved to Ethereum blockchain last couple of hours. So 5.2 million in value since these are quite large. Seems reasonable to assume that a whale could be responsible for this transaction. And usually people move coins onto an exchange when they're getting ready to sell, although not always. Sometimes they'll break it up into smaller wallets to avoid being tracked like this. And so um, uh, they, uh, anyway, going down a rabbit hole here. Uh, let's see, question, comment for chaos saying, I would not be too surprised if the end game for regulated stable coin, yeah, exactly, is a Fed issued CBDC. They feel threatened by the reason they're going after stable coins is the governments and powers that be want to issue their own CBDC, central bank decentralized currency. And uh, and that's where they can kind of the banks still have a hand in the pot and um, and they can track all this. So it kind of defeats the purpose, does defeat the purpose of being anonymous as crypto is or is supposed to be. So keep that in mind, too. And that's fortunate, but follow the money. And uh, Kraken is more pro-libertarian than other. That's a good point, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they're more pro-libertarian than other major U.S. market players, a, like a Coinbase, which is just a um, big um, public company that just wants to make money. So that's a good point as well. And uh, certainly worth noting. But um, at any rate, uh, Kraken will survive. They, um, they'll do fine. It's just that's one thing that will drive people offshore and into more risky investments like yield farming and things like that uh, uh, offshore. That Because um, I was watching at Gensler this morning, uh, his recording of trying to be funny, comparing a steak, the kind you eat, and to staking in a sort of silly um, PR stunt, but essentially saying, that anything you know he was referring back to uh, an old reference and i forget the person who did uh, gave the original reference but basically anything containing yield it's not about the term it's what it does so anything containing yield or earn and all of so these 20 percent apy 
programs and packages they are going after because the banks, that is how they make money. If they're able to do that, it's going to kill the banking system. And arguably, um, you know, and I'm skewing toward obviously that it, it, it does. The banking system is archaic and it needs we need a new model. But that's where the big money is right now. And it's there are safeguards in place. We have to keep in mind that. So, you know, all these scams with crypto, sending money here and there and the other uh, across border, borderless, frictionless payments, but also facilitating illegal activity. And, and uh, you know, so there's, again, we're in the wild west of all these things. And so, you know, so that's what's going on here in the news here. Let's see. Um, <laughs> look at this. Bankman Freed used VPN to watch the Super Bowl. You know, it's just it's, uh, it's a crazy world we live in. This guy should be behind bars. All right. What well, this? He wants to ban crypto staking and stable coins under scrutiny. Watch Market Report live. And uh, you can do your own research on this and go online. There's plenty of um, um, uh, data out here. Here's a video by Mark Yusko. I do like Mark here. Why the next Bitcoin bull run? I won't play this whole thing. But uh, I'd be interested to see the title. If he's saying 100,000 this year, that's a big question on all of our minds. <clears throat> is, um, you know, what, uh, how, what, does this thing shoot up when we have a melt up or do we have kind of a deeper pull back down and the normal cycle? And that's something we've, we're going to talk about more in the crypto um, class tomorrow and Active Trader. So basically, here's the news a crypto investor sentiment remains neutral despite market downturn so sentiment neutral but we really didn't see much we saw the markets kind of all over the place this morning like i said that we would and let's take a look here in a minute what is going on in the markets but it's a good time with such volatility i don't recommend trading if you're new and um you know i will comment on we're watching for cpi data or inflation data or you know the fed but don't read into that too much generally you want to kind of stay on the sidelines until the markets settle out it's a you know day traders game so i wouldn't be sitting there staying up late watching the cpi and then if you see a pump like we saw this morning you know to buy into that because it's been uh it's going to whipsaw quite a bit <clears throat> and um, we want to see where the the momentum is going um, and here, why is Bitcoin and crypto pumping after the Fed meeting? Take a quick look at this and let's see. Uh, the answer is who knows, but uh, I can't so bad. Yes. So big question on everyone's minds. What will be the catalyst that brings institutional investors back to the markets? Certainly true. And how can they avoid the same risks that crippled them before? Yeah, and as are regulations the answer? And so, I mean, this regulation is a double-edged sword. We've been waiting for meaningful regulation by the SEC and really to find for, for the markets as a whole to designate who the regulatory body will be. Is it going to be the CFTC? Uh, you know, as a, as a commodity, is it going to be the SEC as a security? Is there going to, do we need a new body entirely to regulate crypto? These are all big questions. And, but regulation is going to be important to bring back in or bring in the big money and institutions and the smart money that's because they we know that it's manipulated. And, um, you know, you still might see an Elon or a Michael Saylor come in and, and buy a more crypto or Kathy at ARK Invest. But the big, big money, as I've been saying, is going to come from institutions, <clears throat> including pension funds sovereign wealth funds and there, there there's so much money on the sidelines there we need that and we need real adoption from the next wave of crypto investors so regulation is necessary for the institutions and pension funds you know they can't come in and risk the money that their 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 obligation is or fiduciary obligation is to protect so they just can't really i mean they um and also that's another reason that the um we've been trying so hard to get uh, GBTC has been trying so hard to get approval for an ETF, a spot ETF on Bitcoin, which would sort of give that oversight, at least some uh, ability for people to come in and everybody to kind of buy into Bitcoin on a larger level. And I'm not up exactly familiar with how the ETFs are regulated, et cetera, but the SEC keeps saying, no, we're not going to do that yet. We want to, we, we don't want to let you have that. So um, it's almost, uh, it, it does make you wonder what their real agenda is. Uh, let's see. So, 
not a whole lot there. These like these news articles, by the way, just so you understand, they're written by people that nothing against this person here, but just they're, they're written by editors who are trying to make a name for themselves and they submit these. They're generally short articles uh, and uh, designed to keep you on the site longer and then bounce around for these other articles. Not usually a whole lot of uh, incredible journalism going on here. Oh, uh, Solana DeFi protocol Everland shents down over liquidity issues. Yeah, I mean, these lending programs are, I, I think we do need, here's bottom line in the TLDR is I think we, we can see a little bit of a pump higher. I've been watching this Dow Jones chart here. And uh, I think that, um, you know, we have topped out and we could see this sort of push higher here up on around 35,000. And I think things are going to roll over and we're going to see another, at least sort of test of the lows here from back in October. But I mean, uh, we've got to pre be prepared for everything. You know, we have these big companies, they have the layoffs, the earnings, it's just the, this, this economy, the, the effects of this economy has not really been seen yet. And those, you know, it's also true that um, I was watching something this morning and Michael Burry actually last night saying, look, this, uh, he's predicting a 1970s style, scenario where interest rates are going up and there's this whole concept of you know the i'm not going to go down a rabbit hole but interesting uh read that he has that the worst is yet to come i i i am keep but i am hopeful that our signals here which have called the bottom the last three cycles and is giving us this mark here again you know and uh again if you we haven't talked about it we'll talk about it more tomorrow but in 2015 <clears throat> pardon me we saw this bottom here and then we had the signal and then we came down and retested and just briefly broke below here okay and again so we've looked at this already but we saw this sort of push higher about you know 84 percent off the low low but uh in this case scenario is about to 50 percent really which we've had in this recent market but then we followed by another drop of like 40 percent so this is what's in the cards potentially another 40 percent drop and then then we put in the bottom we had these three months here on our tsi where it would said you know bottomed but it was inching higher if we open this up it would push up and then kind of went down a little bit see that so and that was that lower low this doesn't look that scary but if we look at the 40 percent drop right here that certainly is in the cards and I think we could see that happen here in the next month or even into the summer. So if we were to see that 40% uh, drop from these levels, uh, that would uh, take us down to around potentially 14,000. There's that number again, that 14,000 that we'd been watching for some time. I've got it on the other trend lines, but you know, this, this would certainly be a big scary um, event and still keep our TSI valid, I imagine, and then push higher from there. But uh, but then this is still the effort for the everything bubble. We've got to take it as it comes. <clears throat> Pardon me. And, um, you know, we still have that 10,000 level as a possible low if all hell goes to a handbasket. So, you know, and uh, looking at the DXY here, still just right in this precipice here of does it push higher into crypto pullback zone? Does it come down here? And we see uh, a crypto rally along these lines. I don't know. We have to see. You have to wait and see. It's just um, non-committal. But it's these times of low volatility that uh, also precede big moves. And again, show me the chart. I'll tell you the news. This DXY, just so hard to predict right here. And uh, we just have to keep an eye on it. This is the daily. So um, let's uh, let me just finish off the news here. See if we see anything else. We could see more. You know, to follow up on that, more downside means more contagion and more pain, which is what the crypto does. And when putting in a bottom, so there are undoubtedly a handful, more than a handful of these type of programs that uh, are teetering on the brink of collapse. And any further downside, <clears throat> we'll see. We'll see more of that happen. And then the good news is then we will be ready to say, okay, we see it now. That's the bottom. All right. A double, I would love to see a double test of this. So, uh, you know, and um, it's interesting. We did see exactly the retest of this vector candle here. 
Uh, question is, do we see the midpoint of this vector candle down here? This was this was a bullish engulfing, not really vector candle sort of subjective. And it's sort of there's a large, hmm, a large push up, kind of less uh, candle wicks on the top and bottom. It's kind of an art and science at uh, seeing those. But at any rate, um, I, we could be drawing lines in the sand. But by the same token, this here, the midpoint of this, whoops, is a, is a bit of a, it looks like a vector candle to me. And that would be, well, this would put us back to that CME gap that we're watching for anyway, 19,194. And nine, just under 19,900, you know, that CME gap that came in down in this range here. So, you know, I, I do think we had lower here and we, we put this on here a while ago. This is a four hour chart. Uh, and, you know, we certainly don't have to fill it now. This could be filled later. I think we've already filled the first, the gap here. So uh, there's also that scenario we push up higher here and then roll down. So it's just, this is no man's land. That the easier times to pick these markets are when we have a really big push in any direction. And, uh, you know, I would even say that um, this here looks sort of like it's a double bottom. And, but uh, kind of inconclusive here, we've got our vol index pushing higher on the four hour, which, so I would say we'd have some follow through to the upside on Bitcoin, but the next cycle down on the four hour, could uh, would coincide with that longer term kind of roll over and pull back. And again, this is a oops, this head and shoulders on Bitcoin. Now, this is the high probability pattern here. Uh, and I'm going to draw this a little bit better because that was a terrible head on that. So, oops. And I have it's if you watch my to my uh, trading view picks, I had uh, called this trade the head and shoulders a couple of them back in 2022. So, you know, it does look like we're putting in a right shoulder here. And so, the where would the measured move go on that? Let's take a look at this. A measured move from that. This is the head to the neckline. A break below the neckline would be would take us down to around, you know, around 18,700. So, you know, um, we want to keep an eye on that as well. So let's see, let's put the news away. Standard CPI inflation rate slows 6.4. Yeah, not much market reaction, which we saw. This is when going out of business Everland. Uh, let's see, this is Mark Yisko in an interview I'll watch later, why the next Bitcoin run may start sooner than expected. And um, yeah, it's interesting, you know, in 2008, when markets bottomed and the bull run started, 70% of investors were still bearish. So I don't know about this guy accumulating everything. You know, if, it's, if you have a long-term outlook, which you should, uh, allocating some down to these levels is not a bad idea, but I, either way, uh, any push higher will likely see a retest here. Not, not always though. Bitcoin is just hard, of, hard to, yeah, I know. It seems like I have a lot of howevers in this conversation. Uh, and uh, let me finish that thought. And come back to this. The general pattern on a breakout is a push up higher and then a pull back to retest, like this. Push up, coming down to retest. We see that all the time. When I say, however, Bitcoin, when it runs and it gets out of the and out of the bottom, let me just kind of find this, clean up the chart a bit. You'll see that it doesn't tend to do that as much. So down here, when it goes, it goes, it doesn't look back. Except for this one, like I said, well, this is, uh, we had a retest here, this is a similar example, bottomed, went up 35%, but then down 20%. So some uh, pullback here, but that W bottom, this was a good example of a W bottom, but this here off of COVID, it just kept on going. So a little bit of pullback here, but it was only after it started going. And um, so it's important, important to note that because back in the 2015 bottom, again, we had some retests here. We had one and two retests here. So another reason I think we come back and do some retesting, but from the actual bottom, it just didn't look back. Not very much. A couple of pullbacks here. 
but uh, you know, we want to be, this is why dollar cost averaging on these pullbacks is, is the name of the game. If you have the capital to uh, allocate over time. And that's why I have had these accumulation zones on here. And so uh, that's a subjective uh, question for each of you, but I encourage you to study that and look for support zones where you can, can do that. The next likely support zone would be this uh, moving average right here. And uh, I have an alert on there as a potential buy. And that's the 300 week moving average, the 300 week uh, simple moving average. Now, looking at this, we could also draw some support right here. That's why I like bottoms so much and coming off of our indicators, because that's, and you guys, you heard me uh, a couple of weeks ago, beginning of February, uh, saying this is one of the best setups we'll see because it was risk reduced. We saw we were coming off of bottoms. Right now, we're kind of in limbo. You know, we have these, uh, we pulled back off of this uh, RSI resistance zone, kind of not clear where, where does this go? Does it keep coming down on the RSI? And uh, we had this uh, big divergence here too, that um, I want to point out. Um, sorry, I'm trying to open this up here. And I think I might be on the wrong chart. Okay, sorry guys, it's a different chart, but there's a got quadruple divergence. Mark is pushing higher and these, these uh, indicators uh, coming down lower. Um, where was that chart? Let me find that. We've got so many charts here. It might have been this one. Yeah, and also, guys, we have the weekly death cross is now sort of confirming. And that um, is bearish. We have a bearish ERI. So we want to keep that in mind. The TSI hasn't gone red yet, but we have a buy on the hash ribbon indicator. So it's like, all right, what do we, what's going on? What do we do here? I still think the most likely scenario is we pull back here to some sort of support in this region. And uh, then it pushes higher. Let me just turn off the uh, Keltner band so it's a little cleaner. Okay, so any questions? Let's see. Uh, the, 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 see, Alex says, you know how the uh, blank government is, KS? I work for them and best believe I have a healthy mistrust for them. They are always uh, bullshitting. Yeah, you know. All right. Uh, yep. Hector says DXY monthly chart looks concerning. Maybe we could certainly look at that. All right. This is the uh, daily. Um, weekly gets a bit, you know, monthly is going to be a bit of jumbled, jumbled here. Um, I, Hector, why do you say that? I mean, it's, it doesn't really tell me much other than this trend line, which we've had drawn on there around 101 may uh, give it support to push higher. But I, I think this monthly chart to me is um, hard to decipher, but, uh, and, and I don't want to like mess up the uh, that daily chart that we had. So let me rebuild that here. But um, yeah, I would, I would encourage you to watch the, the daily on the DXY. So I've given you this guys, this is your roadmap. If this pushes higher here, and the DXY then gets crypto pullback zone, you know, likely it would push up to this next resistance level, have some re relief on crypto. And then this would be a big pivot point question mark here. Does it, would it then kind of launch up into crypto crash new lows zone? And that would put us potentially into May. I mean, these are not drawn to scale or on timeline. This I drew these for visuals and being able to, to understand what I was drawing. So I think this should be condensed, but certainly, uh, but certainly the bottom, we have a lot of in, in the past um, history has repeated that July in July and the summer has been the bottom of have a kind of a market crash. July 2021, July of 2022 was sort of a, uh, a bounce and then going back in prior cycles. So, you know, we want to watch these. And then if for some reason the DXY does start coming down here, we could see a brief rally in crypto and uh, and then. It, then it could sort of push higher and, and this would be that push into so that scenario is, is certainly on my radar and if it comes pushing down here below the 101 range we could have a um, super pump rally zone and for a while so um you know all of these are on the table we, we, we need to be um, nimble and that's why we're swing traders that gives us the greatest advantage 
So, all right, let's go through the uh, charts. We've covered the news here. We can just kind of run through some of the charts here. And again, that head and shoulders on Bitcoin. And uh, let's see, the Dow Jones here kind of struggling to find some strength. I think this here, uh, there's a lot of open air, as I call it, from support. So this, this to me looks more likely, you know, maybe a push higher to uh, hit this support or sorry, resistance. And uh, I've got a few people, TA, that are, I trust that I'm not going to rebuild because it's complicated and probably give you guys a headache. But um, two people in particular, very strong TA, um, a bit annoying to watch and um, and difficult to watch. So the so the TLDR on that is they're sort of saying, look, I think that you know, the signs are in that uh, this thing rolls over and we have a big reversal and we have a big kind of another leg down and crash. People are complacent right now. And so what I would suggest to you is to if you're to, to not be all in cat or not be all invested right now. And so if not um, pulling money out of these markets just to see what happens. And again, the strategy, the optimal strategy for these kinds of things at big potential reversal areas where we don't know if it comes back down or goes higher. A prudent way to do that is sell a half or two thirds of the position because you could then you have cash to buy back at support levels. Buy high, buy low, sell high, sell high, buy low. So right here, this is more of a risky situation. And if we were to put on one of these trade things here, we'd say, well, uh, the upside is only here because there's resistance and the downside, this is a terrible risk reward ratio, right? So my recommendation is, would be if you're holding you know, US stocks or even in crypto and uh, not financial advice, educational purposes and all of this, but you know, this would be a time to be selling into any push higher, taking profits, uh, holding some in case things rocket higher. We don't know, but generally either this scenario plays out or this scenario plays out. And this scenario is great because you've de-risked. If you sell and take profits into this push higher, and it goes and you take half off the table and it goes higher, right? Um, you might, you can't say, we could say, well, I, I wish I had stayed all in. Well, no, because usually it comes back to retest support. So that's when, but you have to be ready to rebuy in and not be a deer in headlights, right? And this is where risk managers, hedge fund managers or probability managers, they're risk managers. So that's the play. And so, um, but I am leaning more towards a deeper pullback on the Dow based on these charts and technicals and what I'm seeing and hearing. Now, if this happens, we're going to see similar things happen, uh, you know, in the SP, S&P and the, um, you know, uh, the NASDAQ 100 and therefore with crypto, these have sort of coupled back again, risk assets like the uh, NDX uh, are going to likely get feel the the pain of you know these downturns let me see i want to put a fibonacci on these just just for you know what and uh, and uh <laughs> look at that look at that just exactly the pullback to the golden pocket these markets fibonacci's are amazing guys i just had a feeling by eyeballing this to the dollar on a daily basis for the NASDAQ 100 from the cycle low of March 2020 to the market cycle high. I'm going to enlarge this. I want you to put down whatever you're doing and watch, pay attention to this. So look at that. You know, I mean, so right here, right in the golden pocket, 0.65 to 0.618 cycle low here. And uh, so you drag that to the top here of the market top, came right back down. So that would have been a great trade in time to buy the NASDAQ 100. And I just wasn't paying attention. Uh, now that it doesn't mean it was the bottom. It just look at that, that push up here. And uh, from here, we can kind of visualize. I already see, you know, these, these chart, charting these markets is not as hard as people try to make it out to be. You know, we've got this. And so that's what I want you guys to pay attention to is uh, what's going on here. I think likely pullback. Now, how low, if we wanted to put a Fibonacci on, how low could it go? Well, it's hard to say. You know, it's hard to say based on this because that was the move. 
uh, unless we went deeper, deeper out of this. But this, we've been in this huge, massive bull market forever. I mean, I almost have to go to a, a five day to zoom out on it. And so if we do this and let's just see what happens here. Oh, wrong one. Okay, the Fibonacci there. I mean, I'm tempted to go there to here and see, you know, that would put us down quite a bit. If we had a crash though, that would be possibly NASDAQ 100, 6290. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid to look. 40, but 45% down, It's these things are still on the table, uh, unfortunately. Now, if we did it from here, it's right in that same area, it's interesting. Huh. Well, I'm going to put an alert there on the Dow. And um, if just uh, if, if everything gets real nasty here, 67.50 on the, the, the NASDAQ 100, forgive me. Uh, we'll see if that happens. Hmm. Be prepared for every uh, anything and everything. Okay, so uh, let's see. That's about all I wanted to cover there. Any other comments? Uh, I don't see anything here. Again, we've got the uh, weekly Bitcoin chart. Again, we'll go into more detail tomorrow's class on the individual coins. I don't see a whole lot moving. Maybe we can pull up a um, polygon chart here. But, but, you know, look at this. We have the bearish ERI and we have a TSI kind of turning over. I mean, that's that turns red here in the following day. Then we, you know, this, this, so all signs are pointing toward we're heading lower in the near term. Uh, let's see some news here. UK, by the way, we have this little news highlights button here, which is great. Bitcoin price clings to 22K as investors digest recent SEC actions and the CPI. Okay, so SEC wants banned crypto staking. So this is being priced in as we speak. And then today in crypto, the UK goes after unregistered crypto ATM operators. Well, those guys are shady anyway. Uh, and uh, South Korea watching the Ripple SEC battle. So... You know, all these things that could just, <laughs> you know, it's going to be interesting to see where things land in the next year. SEC battle with Ripple. Do they win? Do they not win? What happens there? But in the short term, the charts are telling me that uh, we're heading lower. We've got the vol index that briefly broke up above is now heading back down into the red zone. So if we look for signs in the past, so the, this, this signals that we're in for a, a another pullback here, maybe not as deep as the low, maybe a little deeper. We, we can see that, but it's happened before, both times. If we zoom out farther, I guess I can't go farther on that, but 2012 pushed up, came back. Okay, back 2015 pushed up, came back. And so what we're watching for here on this vol index, make sure you're watching this here on the weekly, is uh, do we see these kind of higher lows because we saw that in every different market cycle here, bottoming out. It didn't just go straight up. So what we didn't have this time, what we had this time is lower lows. So that's interesting. Okay, so what we'd want to see ideally is, you know, something along this lines. But if the slope is any indication, you know, we're looking at putting, well, sheesh, that's into October, potentially you know, um, to calm down and go higher. But the low would be in potentially sort of in the midsummer, right? So this is kind of all fitting this narrative of midsummer bottoming out. So your takeaway is we, we you know, do not believe we are, we have bottomed. Uh, I would highly suggest don't go buying everything because you think that uh, we've bottomed and these are the best prices you ever see. Uh, you know, having some allocation uh, would be a good idea, but I think uh, following the signals here is likely that we push down from here. So I think we've covered that. Uh, and just looking for and the bullish the week the weekly Bitcoin death cross. Kind of hard to say for some reason. Let's go back in time in our time machine here, and let me turn off this ERI, and we can look at uh, the. So um, in the past, death cross hasn't hasn't been well we haven't had a weekly death cross before which is uh is what is the reason it's significant we just haven't had one the death cross is when the 50 period crosses below the 200 period and on the daily we've seen one but and we came down here and nearly got there that was a 2015 low curve back up higher on that 
came down again, didn't even get close to it in 2018, but we've had, we have this. Uh, now, whether or not, yeah, I mean, that's a pretty tight slope. I was about to say, if we see a big rally in Bitcoin, this thing maybe smooths out. But it it's it's crossing, so it's you know it's kind of a made up figure, the death cross. But it's I don't see any way this doesn't cross down below it. And the big question here is, how significant is that? And uh, I don't know. I mean, on a daily basis, this has happened a number of times. And uh, here's we even have the death cross indicator, right? So let's see, square pen to okay. So basically. The uh, death cross happened here, and that was January of 2022. And I was telling people to get out of the markets and turn some of these uh, moving averages off. So that precipitated a deeper drop, came back up to test the um, uh, 50 uh, month moving average. I guess that's the 200, rather, right here. And then the 50 became strong resistance. So if price gets down below here, that that's really not good. I mean, you know, we, but it could be short term because I know these can. Here's another one where you saw the death cross. We saw that double dip down for a deeper low, and then things prices rallied, and we got back above to sort of retest the highs. And then these, uh, but these death crosses on the daily basis over time have been short lived. You know, a couple of weeks to a month, and sort of some chop back in here with the COVID crash. This was a longer one, so it's on everyone's mind, and a lot of times that can become self-fulfilling. Uh, I don't know why I want to turn this on, but I'm going to turn on the average true range here on this uh, daily. So uh, that's, you know, it is interesting. The ATR is uh, is bullish on the daily. The uh, Ichimoku, you know, we are still above the cloud, but this is, I'm not going to pay attention to that right now. All right. Uh, I don't see any other comments here. So we, we don't have a clear indication of where we go from, from, from here. I think it's, on the one hand, right here, we go back to on the one hand, on the other hand, on the one hand, it's bullish. It's kind of above this area and above the uh, bull market support band, if we turn that on. So we really want to see that hold above that. And uh, so, you know, this sort of fits the narrative. I, the ideal scenario is, and we talked about this last week, is we come back here on a slighter pullback and we do bounce within the bull market support band between the red and green and we see this scenario bottoming and going higher versus coming down below below the bull market support band because that kind of acts like quicksand you know what let me do one other thing here and um i want to pull up a five-day gaussian channel this is something that don't we often look at but it's kind of like quicksand in bitcoin's history when it gets below the five-day gaussian channel yeah, yeah. So let me turn. Let's look look at this. And keep an eye on that. The bull market support band. Turning that off. I'm going to turn off the SMA. Yeah. So this is that five day Gaussian channel. And um, what we can see here going out is when it gets below, when it gets into the channel, it gets quick, like quicksand, and it gets it stays in the channel. If it gets below the quicksand, then it's it's sort of not a good sign. It's going to spend a time below it. But either way, when it gets pulled into that quicksand, that's what happens. So back in here, when it came, we got pulled into quicksand back in 2014, stayed green for a while, then it dropped below into the red, and that was where it stayed. So it stayed there for multiple uh, months there, I guess, uh, and multiple weeks at least. And then it tried to get back out of it, couldn't. But once it was above, back above the five-day Gaussian channel off to the races, that was January, sort of December 15. And so we pushed up higher. This is really what we want to see. A green Gaussian channel above and above it, because that's when we see this, these nice rallies. Here, um, this one pulled in the quicksand, came back down. This is 2018, 19, got briefly above it, did go green, got pulled back down in the uh, March COVID crash, and then sort of took some time to get back above it. But this here was again the 2020 rally, pulled into the quicksand. So we're, you know, we're still in the quicksand here with this red. Uh, you know, we want to be back above 30,000 
but I also think that's a resistance area. We've got some work to do here, everyone. So we really want to be buying low on support in these regions and accumulation zones and not taking unnecessary risk up in these ranges. Everyone got that? Uh, Private Jade, has Las Vegas ever been on Bitcoin outcomes? I'm sure they do. <clears throat> and I don't know where to go for that or, you know, um, probably in the sports bar area. Go, you could go online. I'm sure there's, there are bad places you can bet on specific outcomes, just about everything, even political uh, events. I forget the website that does that, uh, but, you know, the odds, the house always wins. So, you know, consider that a lottery ticket. Uh, so, all right, guys, everyone uh, understand what we're looking at here. So, again, I think we see a couple more weeks, probably coming into March. We More like a month here. We're in mid-February. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone, by the way. And, uh, and uh, so, but this just tells me we're looking at March as a bottoming. And I've been saying that for a, a month or so now. And um, I don't know why it just feels like, feels like that's what we do. We pull back down and fill that CME gap, find support on this line, hopefully bounce from here, get some help from the DXY drop in below. And we're off to the races. We shoot up to 30,000. And then we see another retracement back down to find support, but getting above the Gaussian channel and getting above the bull market support band. That's what we really want to see. So um, let's take a look at uh, some other things here, like uh, Polygon Matic. We just say we'd take a look at that. I do want to let's look at the total market cap. Total market cap below a trillion dollars, though, rejected. And guys, uh, <laughs> like I say, I told you so, but remember, we put this overlay on here, it's matching it almost exactly. So, uh, Total market cap, you got, but look at this as opportunity. If we get total market cap back down in these ranges, you should set your alerts down here. These are the buying areas that will make fortunes, depending on how much you're investing with, but those will be legendary uh, buying. Well, I won't say legendary. I'll say optimal buy zones. Okay. And there's one here. And, you know, it's going to be great when we have sort of AI trading uh, systems. I'm sure people are working on it just to can analyze all of the stuff and weight it and time weight it because they're just one brain looking at these things. But that, that'll be what we're up against in the future. Now, why did I draw that uh, box there? It was kind of a, a zone and I should probably redraw that based on, well, the 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 estimation puts it here we had kind of a liquidity pocket back in this region uh i guess we could expand that a bit but then it just sort of becomes this one i'll leave it on there but i again draw these boxes 500 billion on market cap uh is so it's going to be if we get there i don't know we will but that would be optimal buy point because this was a consolidation area way back when back in 2020, 2021, tried to break out, rejected, came back, rejected, third time's a try. Usually it's the third or fifth time. But uh, the fact that we got rejected at a trillion dollars here really tried to beat it, but that's a hard rejection here. And um, that's going to send market prices lower. And I'd say this is very critical support line here on this line down around 830 trillion. If we lose this, I'm going to set another alert. If we lose this at, say, 785 billion crossing down, uh, let's see, I'll leave it on the trend line. Sure. That's um, basically, I'm going to say sell uh, everything. <laughs> so, but hopefully not holding too much at that point. So, watch those uh, larger indexes here if you're not already. Let's see, uh, Pirate J, I'll get to that. And uh, let's take a look at a couple of things here. Total to market cap, total to, you know, and the DeFi. Uh, not much to see in there. So let's just take a quick look at some things here. We've got, you know, Adam still in its upper trading range. If, if it's for Adam, I'm going to sell it if it gets to $17 right in this resistance area, just, just to take Jeff off, off the table and wait for at least a pullback in the channel. And uh, AVAX uh, similarly saw this some pullback there. 
and I'm, I'm like suddenly seeing Fibonacci's everywhere. Almost to the golden pocket there. And um, so let's see. OXT says that there's not a lot that looks good here. We've got Rune in an upper trending channel, but the markets overall feel weak. Polygon Matic, all green on the radar, but look at all this open air. And that's your question for you, uh, Private J. The moving averages, uh, he asks, what moving average, which moving average do you use on the charts on the steadiest basis? Uh, just 21 and 50, Jay. Uh, this is what I use the most, and uh, both on a daily, uh, all, all time frames. And sometimes I'll add in, these are EMAs, exponential moving averages. Sometimes I'll add in a nine. So um, you guys should know this, though. It, go watch the TA, the 90-minute TA that I did in the members area. I cover all this and not singling anybody out, but I, I, it's important that you know these things. So I've just added a nine day and a nine period, no matter what time frame you're on. Just go a little lighter. I, the, the nine day, I don't really love. It can be great in uptrends, you know, um, but not always. So here's the nine. It'll sometimes often pull back to the 21, the nine or the 21. Now, these are just variations on the simple 10, 20, 50, 100, 200. Those are the staples from Wall Street going way, way back, uh, you know, and then we got kind of, uh, you know, super creative way back when in the day trading and swing trading days and say, well, instead of a 10 day moving average, I'm going to use a nine day. So I'll get there sooner. It's like six minute abs in the Internet marketing world. And then five minute abs came out. It's just like everyone's trying to get an edge. So that's the nine day. So you're at, it might be saying, well, why are you using a 19 here on the, instead of 21? I mean, because the 21 fits better. So, you know, we can, you can, you can certainly experiment with that. You guys, uh, let's say instead of a nine, I don't know. I've never looked at an 11. Crypto's a little crazy. Uh, looky there, 11, not so bad. Not so bad. Uh, came back right on the 11 there. We got, we had a little mini rocket. We had a bigger rocket, but it, it fizzled, you know, and then kind of, you know, that's why I prefer rockets on the 21 or 50, you guys, uh, or preferably both. See this right here? See this little rocket right there? Look here. Let me open all this all up. It's a good teachable moment. All right. So we have, if we go back, we have a little rocket here. This is a great looking rocket there on the night on the 11th day on, you know, w whether you call it the 10 day, the nine day, the 11 day, whatever. Um, but right there sitting right on it, the blue one rocket shot up a bit. And then we had a rocket on the 21 day and see how the rocket that that rocket shot up in the sky. Boom, 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 boom. Ran out of fuel, came back down. Look at that. Had another rocket on the 10 day, 11 day. And uh, and shot up. Got, this is, was actually textbook rocket, but it was on the nine period. And the problem with the nine period is is simply it's hitting the upper Bollinger Band, I would imagine. Yeah. So, I mean, these things came up, hit the upper, broke the upper Bollinger Band and then sold off. Came back in here. So, you know, these these are some nuances to keep in mind that upper Bollinger Band is going to be your ceiling on uh, price action. So. But watching these 21 periods, shot up, nice big follow through candle, shot all the way up here. Great trade, came back down. Oh, kind of a rocket here. It didn't close as high on the upper boundary as I'd like. So it just was a big green candle. But it did, it did see follow through and shot up higher. And then this was a great bullish engulfing candle um, right here on the, the, nine, the 10 day. So it has some follow through. But when you start seeing these wicks up top, then that's when you're like, all right, this thing's running out of steam. So we're pulling back here. If today, if we if we closed here the top on Matic, um, then that could be a, a, a nice looking rocket there, right? And it would be bullish engulfing. I don't know that we will keep an eye on it if these markets rally and we close here. What, uh, what I could do. Just going alert happy here, but uh, these are important. So we want to set this. If at any point today, <clears throat> um, let's see. It's not going to let me kind of move it. Let's see if I do that. 
crossing above. I want to say rocket by. And uh, if you're wondering where I got that number, I, I didn't. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to get it. Yeah, so I'm gonna make it a little bit. Let's put all these drawings in here, by the way. Uh, let me clear all these drawings real quick. Drawings. Okay. Huh. What are these drawings on here? Is that? Uh, are somebody drawing on the Zoom? <laughs> Just these weird yellow lines here. I don't think I did those. All right. If, you, if someone's playing around with the line tool, um, you know. Don't quit your day job, you know, <laughs> not quite the artist. Uh, maybe you guys aren't seeing this. All right, but here's my point on this. I'm looking for if this close is at or below above the boundary, upper boundary of the red candle before, because that will be bullish engulfing. Uh, well, not quite, not quite. It didn't quite engulf. So, you know, we could see maybe what we want to do is that would be an early signal to just come back and check. And if it closes up here toward the top of the day, then we have a, a rocket on the 21, you know. So any questions on that? Uh, good. Okay. See that. Anyway, I'm glad we, we looked at that here. So all green on the uh, radar, though. I'm really curious where these lines are coming from. Let's see, annotate. There's a thing in here for annotating and it's on draw. So maybe that was me. Let me see if my eraser erases all this. Oh, look at that. It might've been me. Error was between my ears, which uh, happens all the time, by the way. All right, mouse back here and uh, move these tools out of the way. I got all these cool tools that uh, we don't really use. What does Spotlight do? uh spotlight nothing okay never mind i think i can do a little oh look at that i can okay that's a neat one an arrow then there's a that i don't need that one okay but this is kind of neat i like that one so that way you can see what i'm talking about here thing all right cool and then i can x out on that nice so uh, let's see. All right. Any questions on that? And I think we could kind of start wrapping up here because, you know, it's not a lot we want. So I'm going to kind of get in all the coins or anything else. I want to focus this class on, you know, the, the indicators mostly, though. So we don't what we don't have are like our trend indicator opening up. I'm trying to get out of this so we can look at some charts. Let's look at Ethereum real quick. OK, so. Um, I'm going to turn off that uh, blue one, the new, the blue EMA, the new blue EMA <clears throat> on Ethereum. It looks kind of interesting. We've got a bullish engulfing candle on Ethereum. What else do we have? We've got an ERI that's green. Okay. Spidey Sense was right. I wanted to look at Ethereum here. So ERI is green. TSI is red, but it, so keep an eye on the TSI. If it goes green today and closes, then we want to see if it closes and confirms what just happened there. Did Polygon just pump right as I jumped off of it? Um, maybe. What just happened there? It's it's just Polygon just did somebody just buy a whole bunch of Polygon. And uh all right, now I've got these the yellow. Whoa, what's going on with these eraser? I want to turn the eraser on, all those lines go away. Some weird stuff's happening there, guys. Hang on one second. And master list here. I might jump down the polygon. Where did Matic go? That's the daily. I mean, somebody just jumped in and bought a bunch of it. Just as we were looking at it. Might have been one of you guys. Maybe one of you is running that Chinese Ponzi scheme in Matic. Um, okay, well, there you go. I was right. <laughs> With by within uh, a hair, I was right. So this so Matic looking very strong here all of a sudden, but keep in mind, uh, this could sell off toward the end of the day. So, you know, but it, as of now, it's showing bullish engulfing 
almost it's you know but it's uh, if it sells off this could still sell off toward the end of the day so just be careful with that uh and uh we'll go through the rest of these all here tomorrow interesting interesting coins though like algorand looks like a rocket on algo what's happening in this market here are we getting uh luna don't even look at that filecoin ave sandbox just doing a fast skim sometimes i'll do that see what's going on seeing some similar layouts phantom coin kind of pushing higher on i bet you if i turn on that uh, blue ema where did it go where did it go that new ema that we had the blue one i think that might have been a different chart anyway uh, you get the point so uh, what were we looking at here we'll unpack more of that tomorrow ada up six percent ada hmm got a nice little rocket on ada okay there you go just skimming through these phantom coin engine coin i don't want to skim and miss anything ada's got a nice rocket so i'm going to move that up here now it's in the wrong list so let me jump over to kind of our active trader list some of you are not an active trader yet but uh this is where we look at all of these coins on every wednesday and um putting into the holding tank into the buy zone so ethereum i do think is looking pretty good here i'd like to see it close above this black line and ideally about 1580 so i'm going to do an alert here 1580 push higher on uh ethereum and why is that important that it would be a 21 day ema buy for me <clears throat> and uh let's see one second yeah and so not going to go through all of these but just some of these here we'll definitely want to be watching these in tomorrow's class okay so uh with that in mind uh near sort of holding on to its 50 period moving average let's take a look at ethan and we'll wrap things up uh based on these uh, indicators so we have a bearish sorry bullish eri green arrow if i turn that on so that's usually our first signal if i turn on the radar mostly green and tsi going green remember you guys uh, when it does you can set alerts on these uh these signals here so you left click on it to highlight it right click to do add alert and what you want to do is change this to green oversold when it or sometimes i'll do crossing up over the 20 line so that will be for me the confirmation that ethereum is a buy you know potentially what i what i might do is buy some uh, here end of the day and then if it gets above this 21 day ma and i get the green tsi then i would go back into it but i just uh, it, it's it, it's with some trepidation because of my overall art market outlook that we pump here and then we see we see a sell at Kurs rally and we sell off into it like we saw in bitcoin so the moral of the story for today is look for buying opportunities, but be ready to sell into resistance. And uh, tomorrow we'll look at to things like, um, you know, the DXY, USDT, and sort of what's going on there. Uh, let's see, we've got a quick look at uh, Didax. Um, you know, Didax is one that came up in uh, recently in our um, in recent class. It's got an interesting uh, candle there, and uh, TSI has not gone green yet. Let's see, what do we want to see here? I want to pull up. Uh, now I've got these templates here. If I want to come in and put on my chart templates for the daily default signals, just doing that with one click. Well, isn't that interesting? Uh, let's see, Bitcoin does have a green TSI forming, but not the uh, ERI. Yeah, not that interesting. So the Ethereum is still trying to get up. Signal line is red. Trend indicator not showing up. That should be in that uh, template. But uh, at any rate, if you guys aren't using these templates, it's a good way to jump back and forth between them. And so on that note, what I'm going to do here for this one is... Um, create a template out of it but this on uh, the bitcoin five day looking bearish 
but that's uh, I usually stick with the daily weekly. Um, anyway, so that that's kind of drawing lines in the sand and trying to find things where there may not be the the Gaussian channel uh, is generally better on the five day. Now, the above above the one day is an early signal. So we had it here. We had it here. We had some noise here. Let's maybe look at a two day on the Gaussian channel to smooth out some of that noise. Two days pretty good. Let me look at this. We'll just look at this for a second. So, you know, uh, two day Gaussian channel got up above, had some trouble, caught most of this move, just caught the breathers. <clears throat> Excuse me, caught most of this move in 20 and 2015, rather. 2020. So we are just coming into the two, sorry, the two day Gaussian channel going green. So now this would suit uh, our overall market thesis a bit better. We see this pullback and then shoot higher. Yeah, so that's what I'm, I'm thinking. You know, any any short term daily pumps here the next couple of days, I'd sell into, take profits, wait for these pullbacks, and these will be our ideal buy zones. Once we kind of have an idea, where do we pull back to? Do we come down and fill that just that CME gap? Do we hold this higher low kind of a format? That would be ideal. You know, do we, what happens? Does this stretch out and we bought them in September? Does it happen sooner? That's what's remained to be seen. But uh, again, on the indicators, uh, that's what we want to be watching for. And uh, even on the short term time frame, can give you those signals. So we open this up to look at the CME gap. So <clears throat> on the four hour, pardon me here, one second. Pushing higher on the four hour on the vol index, but it does tend to cycle. You know, again, we're green with our ERI, TSI, signal, and bell and the vol, vol index. So keep that mantra in mind ERI, TSI, signal, and bell. So this early reversal indicator, just turning this on is our first indication in the green arrow, the uh, TSI. So ERI TSI went green here. This is a four hour chart. This was um, yesterday, yesterday about uh, 3 p.m. And uh, so ERI TSI signal has been green for a while now. And then we had a couple of bells. We're just printing a new bell on the four hours. I think in the short term today through tomorrow, we're pushing higher and we have uh, all five indicators. So we talk about the three kings, which is the ERI, TSI, and the signal line, the, or the four kings. There's like the three horsemen, the four horsemen. I get them all mixed up, but I just made these up. But if you get five and um, the five kings or whatever you want to call it, but the five, all five is, is really strong indication. So our ERI, TSI, green signals, green. Uh, we're getting a trend buy indicator on the bell today. I'm just going by what our signals are showing, getting a fresh bell, uh, bell signal by, and this vol index creeping up higher on that. So let's just look at this again, four hour bullish and uh, daily ETH bullish, daily Bitcoin bullish-ish. <laughs> There's a new one for you. You know, almost bullish. We've got uh, ERI a couple of days ago, TSI going green. Signal isn't green yet, but it's kind of this, it is a nice bullish engulfing candle here. So it remains to be seen what's going to play out. You know, are we forming the right shoulder of a head and shoulders? Or, you know, that's the thing is uh, I'd be, I'd be taking some off the table in here. If you see any pumps up higher on these wicks, that's my expectations, which is a right shoulder playing out. We're going to come down lower. We're going to come down potentially the 18,700 level. Okay, everyone, that's all I have time for. Wow, we ran a little long somehow. I didn't know how I did that. I thought we were running short. Okay, so uh, thanks, uh, Tori, and thanks, Alex. That's all we have time for today. And uh, we'll have more tour for you tomorrow. If you're not yet a member of M3 Crypto, just go to M, sorry, moonstream.io. That will redirect you there. We have a few spots open for that, but not many. And um, that's all for you guys. If you uh, are just interested in the indicators, you can go to cryptomastery.online. These are our, the backbone of everything we do here at Moonstream. So uh, thanks, everybody, and uh, we'll talk soon. Stay safe, and uh, we'll know more in the coming days. Take care.